this video, I'm going to look at a Philips CDR820. This is an audio CD recorder with a three CD changer, and it'll actually dub it up to four times. It's got a bit of a problem. It thinks that the CDR drawer is open, even though it's not. That's the complaint, is that the CDR side doesn't work properly. Sometimes it opens, sometimes it closes, and then it kind of sticks. So I'm thinking it's, it's more than likely uh, one of the switches that detects what position the drawer is. Just before I started to record, it opened halfway and stuck there. Let's get the top off this thing. And, uh, oh, it's got discs in it. That's not good to transport units with discs. Good way to uh, good way to end up with discs falling over in the inside of the machine. Uh, let me get the top off this one here, and we'll take a look at how this mechanism works on this um, client. Said that the, the changer is okay. His problem is that the drawer doesn't open and close properly. That that's what it was brought in for. WTF Phillips. WTF. You can't even put regular screws on. I just so happen that I have a security bit though. Okay, so what we have in here, we have a three disc changer and we have a recorder. And uh, it's a Mitsumi drive. It's on this thing. And I'm thinking it probably has the open close detection switch is like a lot of the, a lot of the computer drives have. It's a little uh, switch with a rocker arm that detects when it's open and closed. Oh, there, see? That's what it's doing. So sometimes it uh, opens and closes on its own. When you go to open it, it'll, it'll close, see? Sometimes it'll do that, and sometimes it'll open. There's four screws on, either, on all four sides here. Those look to be the ones that hold the CD into place. So if I remove these ones, I should be able to remove the actual CD drive. So that will allow me to lift the drive up. Now it's still attached by a ribbon cable to the rest of the mechanism, so I have to be careful there. What I'm going to do is I'm going to unplug the drive from the mechanism. And now I can work on this separately from the rest of the machine. Okay, I'm going to take this base plate off bottom of the deep or CD recorder because I want to access the circuit board. That are activated when the the drawers open and close. See if I can find the way out there. Right here I can see them. There's a couple of, there's a pin switch here. And a pin switch there that gets activated when it's open. See this pin switch right down here. These type of pin switches cause nothing but problems. The uh, contacts get dirty in them and then you get intermittent reads. I'm just going to lift the board down here a bit. I'll just undo this connector and see if I can tip the board down slightly just so I can see. So I only see the one switch right here. And sometimes these switches give trouble. They get dirty, and when they get dirty as they're, as they're switching on or off, you get some contact bounce, which causes noise and can cause the microcontroller to uh, misread it. So I'm going to take some cleaner. I'm just going to spray a little bit of cleaner down into that switch. Put 
the screw back into the board here. Now put the bottom back on. Okay, disk drive opened. Let's try our, our 100 sound effects disk. Should probably put one of the screws in. Oh, okay. It's still reading incorrectly. Interesting. That works. So it's still reading that switch like it's open when it's not. We'll take another go at that switch. The switch activates when the tray is out all the way. And when the tray is going in, it's supposed to signal that the tray is on its way in, but it's still reading it as being open because it's telling me that the CDR is opened. If we look right down into the mechanism here, you'll see that when the, when the disc drawer starts to close, little white button comes down and pushes on the pin switch and I think what's happening is that little button is not pushing that pin switch down far enough to activate it so what I'm going to do is I'm going to uh, I put a little spacer in there of course this is the little pin I'm referring to right here when when the door comes down or the door goes in you see that little pin gets pushed okay what I've done here is I just put a little dot of be weld on top of the little plunger and I'm gonna let it dry here and it should be enough that it should still be able to to uh, retract all the way but it'll just give me a little bit more clearance maybe half a millimeter or so of clearance which should depress that switch fully okay now that uh, it's had a chance to dry I think that might just do the trick we'll see whether it's gonna make whether it's gonna clear it now when the uh, circuit boards reattached Okay, reattach the board one more time here. And then we'll see if we've made any progress getting the uh, drawer to properly close. So, screws back in. Let's uh, remount the unit. It's open and it closes. It opens. And it closes. And where's play? And there it is, it plays. Open, close. I think I got it. All it was with that little white plunger, that the little link that presses down on the switch wasn't pressing the switch properly. So it wasn't signaling that it was closing. We just put the screws back in here and we can get this one back together. I gotta shut it off when I do this because the screws are actually, you have to have this drawer open to get at the screws. 
And again, it's, it's using these Torx screws. So I've, I've gone and magnetized my Torx driver so that I can do this. Okay, get the bezel piece to go on the front, wherever I did with that. Give it another test. Demo mode, press stop. Five seconds, okay. There we go. Now demo mode is off. Okay. Demo mode on. Our demo mode off. Welcome to Philips Audio Power on. Open. Close. Read the disk. And play. takes forever to read. There it goes. It's because it's got a hundred tracks on it. So, oh, you dial the tracks in directly. That's kind of cool. It's actually a, a kind of a neat machine, you know. That was supposed to be a cat purring, I think. Is that a cat? 29. It's an awful loud cat purring. <laughs> There's some dirt on here. Okay, that one works. Let's just uh, make sure the other one works. Uh, this number two, good enough. And then I'll put it together and get it out of here. Oh, this even plays MP3. Cool. It's got a keyboard you can plug into it. Uh, this two. it. Unit works fine. Thanks for watching and we'll uh, catch you in the next one. Now excuse me while I go and rip a copy of Little Walter because this stuff's great. <laughs>